Phoenix Marketing International identified Bridgeport, Connecticut, Los Alamos, New Mexico, Naples, Florida, and Washington, D.C. as the four U.S. cities with the highest percentage of millionaires. Data consistent with that study show the following number of millionaires for samples of individuals for each of the four cities. We've already identified the sample estimates for the percentage of millionaires in each of the cities. And now we're ready to run a hypothesis test of equality. Using a 0.05 level of significance test for the equality of the population proportion of millionaires for the four cities. So my null hypothesis will be, I will assume that these percentages um, are the same. Um, the percentage of millionaires in Bridgeport, and I'm going to subscript these uh, to be more identifying to the particular city instead of using 1, 2, 3, 4, um, is equal to the percentage of millionaires in Los Alamos, is equal to the percentage of millionaires in Naples, is equal to the percentage of millionaires in Washington, D.C. So I'm assuming the percentage in each of these cities is the same, and I'm running a test to see if I can prove otherwise that is a difference somewhere, that they're not all the same. So I'm going to say here in the alternative that basically not as above, that they're not all equal, that there is a difference somewhere. And I'm going to run a test and see if I can um, conclude that by rejecting the null hypothesis. If this were just two populations, I would run a test um, similar to what I did earlier uh, for proportions. Um, but this is uh, more than two populations, so I'm going to apply um, chi-square distribution uh, to get my test statistic. Um, and the first thing I'm going to need to do uh, to calculate that value is to look at the values in the table. Okay, I've got the table here with the observed frequencies and the totals. And I want to calculate what are called the expected frequencies. Now the expected frequencies um, are frequencies um, assuming that the null would be true. And that's what we're doing. We're assuming the null is true. To calculate the expected frequencies, I'm going to use the formula giving it, given in the text. And I'm going to start with um, Bridgeport. There were 44 millionaires out of 500. And um, we're going to calculate what we would expect the frequency to be out of 500, uh, given that all the percentages would be equal. Now, in using the formula, it says to take the row i total. So 44 is in the first row, and the first row total is 149. Then it says to multiply that by the column j total. Well, the column that the 44 is in uh, is the first column, and that total is 500. And then it says to divide by the total sample, and the total sample is 1,600. 1,600 people were taken, 500 from Bridgeport, 300 from Los Alamos, 400 from Naples, and 400 from Washington, D.C. Now, if I calculate this value, I get 46.5. So I'm going to put 46.56 as my expected frequency uh, for Bridgeport. Now, just to stop a moment here, why does this calculation make sense? Well, first of all, notice that out of the total 1,600 people in the sample, 500 of them were from Bridgeport. So taking 500 divided by 1,600, I get 0 0.3125. 31025 percent of the people in the sample came from Bridgeport. Now, the total number of millionaires in the total sample was 149. So if all 
the percentages of millionaires in each of the cities are equal, then Bridgeport should have 31.25% of the 149. So if I multiply that by 149, I get 46.56. Or they would be expected to have 46.56 millionaires out of the 500, if, if the null was true. Now, let's uh, go on to the next one. And we'll make room for that by erasing my calculation here. And let's look at Los Alamos. The 35 is in the first row and the second column. So to calculate the expected frequencies, I will look at the first row total. 149 and I will multiply that by the um, column J total um, but 35 is in the second column so I multiply by 300 and then divide by the total sample size 1600 and I get 27.94. So my expected frequency is 27.94. Um, and again, just to try to explain why this calculation makes sense, um, if I look at the 300 divided by 1600 and calculate what that is, That would be 0.1875. So Los Alamos um, has 18.75% of the total sample. They had 300 people involved in this sample of 1,600. So 18.75% of the sample came from Los Alamos. Well, if the percentages of millionaires in each of the cities is assumed equal, then we would expect that uh, they would share that same percentage of the total number of millionaires, 149. So 18.75 percent of 149 is equal to the 27.94. Or we would expect 27.94 millionaires coming out of that 300 sample from Los Alamos. Now, stopping here for a moment, it looks like um, the Bridgeport um, observed frequency is a little lower than the expected and Los Alamos um, the observed frequency is higher than what would be expected so we are seeing estimate wise from the samples a little variation uh, from um, the null hypothesis being true and uh, let's continue so let me go ahead and do the calculation for Naples And notice that the 36 for Naples is in the first row, um, third column. So I'm going to take the first row total times the third column total and divide by the 1600. So I get 37.25. as my expected frequency. And I will continue on there. And for Washington, D.C., that would be 149 times 400 over 1,600. And I also get 37.25 when rounded. Now let's go down to the um, second row, the 
456 that weren't millionaires in Bridgeport. And we'll calculate the expected frequency there. And um, that would be, now that's in the first or second row first column. So the second row total would be 1451. And the first uh, column total divided by the 1600. And that gives me 453.44. And then I'm going to go ahead here and go to the the next one Los Alamos second row second column so row 2 total 1451 times the second column total 300 divided by the overall total and I get 272.06. And then for Naples, that would be the second row, third column. So the second row total times the third column total over the 1600 and that would be 362.75 and then just going on to the last one 362.75 okay so I have the observed frequencies the original frequencies and I have the expected frequencies now I can work on calculating the chi-squared test statistic. And I'm going to use this formula. Now this formula looks more complicated than what it is. It's basically saying to find the differences um, between the observed frequencies and the corresponding expected frequencies. Square those. Divide by the expected frequencies and do that over each of the two rows and four columns, adding them all together. So I'm going to start up there with Bridgeport and I'm going to take the um, observed frequency, subtract the expected frequency, square that, divide by the expected frequency, Then I'm going to go over to um, Los Alamos and I'm going to take the observed frequency, subtract the expected frequency, square that, divide by this expected frequency, and then I'm going over to Naples. to Washington and then I'm going down to row 2 I'm going to continue to add so 456 subtract 453.44 go to the next column 265 and the 
next one. And finally, the last one. And then I will do all those calculations and add them up to get 2.48. So my chi-squared value is 2.48, and I need a um, critical value so I can run the test. Using the chi-squared distribution, which is not normal, roughly looks like this, and an alpha at 0 0.05 level of significance, I need to calculate my um, critical value, which is chi squared sub alpha. And I need to go to the table to get that. So going to the table, I have a 0 0.05 area in the upper tail. And my degrees of freedom is k minus 1. And I have four categories there. So subtract 1 is 3, and my critical value from the table is 7.815. Now, basically says that my test statistic of 2.48, which is smaller, than 7.815, so it's got to be somewhere to the left. So uh, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. It is not far enough away from um, what we're assuming in the null hypothesis uh, to get the rejection. So the conclusion is uh, do not reject. So I would say do not reject h sub 0 since 2.48 is less than 7.815. Um, my test statistic is less than my critical value, so do not reject. We cannot prove there is a difference in the percentage of millionaires between these four cities that uh, the null hypothesis cannot be rejected. That's not saying the null hypothesis is true. It's just that we don't have enough evidence uh, to reject it. We could also run this test with a p-value. The p-value um, given by the table, and the table again is not very high resolution, but the table at three degrees of freedom, my 2.48 is between the 0.584 and the 6.251. So it's somewhere between 10 and 90 percent. Uh, using Excel to get the p-value, I have the p-value is more accurately 0.4783 which is greater than the 0 0.05 level of significance uh, risk that we were willing to take. So again, do not reject. In other words, if we reject the null hypothesis, we are running um, at very high risk and being wrong in making a type 1 error. So we do not want to reject based on the p-value.